Welcome back to Humans of Microsoft. This is a segment where we talk to people just like you and me, but they all happen to work for Microsoft. And today I have a guest who is not really just like you and me because it's a, it's an actual rock star. And I'm so happy to welcome my good friend Abel Wong to the show. Hello, Abel. How are you? I'm doing really good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. Such a pleasure to have you. And as the first guest of season two, Abel, you are a principal program manager and you work for Azure Incubations, right? Yes, that is correct. I'm uh, officially, I'm the technical advisor to the CTO of Azure, so to Mark Rusinovich. So Abel, I know that a few years ago, you were living in Houston and you moved to, to the Pacific Northwest where you are now. So in the region of Seattle, which is uh, you know, the headquarters of Microsoft. Why did you decide to move and how do you feel that it impacted your career? Uh, that's a great question. I actually, I've always wanted to make it to the West Coast. Right? I grew up in the Midwest um, in the United States, but I wanted to be in California because clearly that's where I belong or somewhere on the West Coast. I definitely didn't belong in the Midwest. Um, but when I graduated from college, I already had my my son then. So money was really tight. And, you know, I got I got a CS degree and I got job offers on the East Coast, West Coast everywhere. Um, but they all paid the same amount of money. But living in Houston, Texas, that, that was the cost of living is so cheap. It was kind of a no brainer. So my plan wow. was move to Houston. And then in a couple of years, I'll find a job somehow and get to the West Coast. But um, what I didn't realize is once you have children, you're kind of stuck in place, right? So yeah. as soon as my son graduated from high school, I looked at my wife, she looked at me and we said, now's the time, right? And, oh, and wow. I knew I wanted to spend a little bit of time in Redmond at least, uh, just because that's the corporate headquarters for Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be where the action was. I wanted to see what it was like. You know, I knew I could compete in Microsoft everywhere else, right? Around the world doing services, sure. doing sales. But I was like, can I compete with those Redmond people? With the, if, can I join like a product group? Can I, am, am I at that level? Can I do this? It was like a challenge. Um, and it was a strategic move on my part in terms of what I wanted for my career. So I actually got a, a, a job um, in product marketing um, oh. and I moved over to Seattle and it was amazing coming into work, going into campus every single day. It was, it was mm -hmm. freaking amazing. Um, the, the amount of connections that I built was, was invaluable. Right, the face-to-face mm -hmm. -face time. I think it was a huge positive influence on my career. And I'm not saying that it's the only way to do things, but for me, um, I'm glad I made the move. What production software that you wrote are you the proudest of? Ah, that's another great question. Um, I think I need to go all the way back in time to this was my third year uh, out of college. I mm -hmm. somehow fooled Chase Bank into thinking that I was actually like a, a software architect of some sort. And at that time, this was during the dot-com boom. So uh, it, everybody was getting jobs. But um, I was, we were trying to get bank information, except they stored all their bank information on mainframes, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to have web servers that could serve a web page that would pull that live information from the mainframe, well, that was really tough. They didn't have a way to do that. So um, if you remember back I guess this would be the early 90s um, or mid 90s. There, there really was very few ways that you could remote and do things, right? So I ended up having to write a bridge using Corba that would talk to both oh. the mainframe and to like the web servers to pull data from mainframes. And it's still being used by Chase today. So it, it was one of my first big projects and one of the funnest things I've done. Wow, Corba, it's uh, like a horror show for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was horrible. <laughs> but I didn't know better back then. Well, yeah, I mean, back then it was a way, right? Yeah. So quickly to finish, and we could talk, you know, for many more hours probably, but how do you stay positive throughout everything that you're going through? Uh, very good question. So for those that don't know, I was diagnosed with cancer about three years ago, and mm. then I beat it. And then in March, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer, and it spread everywhere, right? Uh -huh. So people often ask me, how do you stay positive? But the truth is, life is hard for all of us. All of us, it's hard, right? In, right. In, in some certain ways. And you can't wait until life isn't hard enough to decide to be happy. So okay. I decide to be happy every day that I can. Wow, this is fantastic. Positivity as a, as a decision, as a conscious decision. I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today, Abel. It was amazing. Thank you so much to all the viewers for watching, and we'll see you next time on Humans of Microsoft.